Welcome back to the Prado Museum. We're here again with our weekly session in English on the Prado Social Media Programming, a project that is supported by our nonprofit, American Friends of the Prado Museum. We thank you to all of our supporters and encourage everyone to find out about us and also our sister institution in Spain, the Fundación Amigos del Museo del Prado. Today we're in the gallery dedicated to the early works of Diego Velázquez, of his civilian period and his transition to Madrid, and specifically going to see this portrait of, identified, the figure Francisco Pacheco. I'm going to talk to you about a little bit about Seville of the time period and who was Francisco Pacheco and why is he so influential in Velázquez's career. Seville in, in the 17th century, this is uh, painted when Velázquez was only around 20, and at this time Seville was very wealthy, cosmopolitan, the capital of the Spanish Empire was rather inland, it was Madrid and it was rather inland, and Seville was the river port that was the gateway between peninsular Spain and the Spanish Empire of the world, the Philippines, the Americas. It was a center of trade. And for the artistic scene, that yes, there was art uh, nobility patronage of the arts, but it was the religious orders, the vast number of religious orders and churches in Seville that would give an artist both economic stability and prestige. And it was within this context that Francisco Pacheco is an artist. He will be the master of Velázquez. Velázquez enters into his workshop as an apprentice. And Pacheco will both recognize, of course, Velázquez's talent, orient his career, help him be introduced to the court in Madrid. And he's also an example of social advancement Francisco Pacheco himself, and uh, of course he will also be Velasquez's father-in-law. Now, Pacheco is one of the leading artistic and intellectual figures, and how does he become that person? He is the nephew of a canon of the cathedral in Seville, and that's a canonigo in Spanish, so I believe it's canon, and this is a relevant figure in the cathedral. And his uncle was also um, very uh, curious and intellectual, and he was part of um, the thinkers. He would have a uh, kind of a forum, a tertulia, uh, get together of the theologians, the artists, the poets, thinking about aesthetics and philosophy. And when his uncle uh, died, Pacheco would also continue with these intellectual meetings. And so he was part of this intellectual group uh, within Seville. And he would also be given many honors thanks to, uh, thanks to his curiosity, his intellect, and his work as a painter. He, any honors in that, by 1599, he was president of the Painters Guild in Seville. And then he would also be named, in Spanish it's called the Veidor, and which is kind of the overseeing of painter quality of the other painters in Seville. And then he was also named Veedor of the Santo Oficio, which is kind of the controller of the orthodoxy in religious paintings. It, it's part of a, it's a position in the Inquisition to make sure that all of the painters are painting the religious uh, scenes according to a seal of approval of the church of how they should be represented. And he would also go on to write the first treatise on art and kind of art instruction in, in Spain, which was called the Art of Painting, and so he's the writer of this. And he would also promote even um, kind of a portrait book of intellectuals and painters of his circle of his time period. So he was very influential in this, in this sense. And these honors and kind of promotion of recog you know, social recognition based on his intellect, based on his, well, on his work as a painter, um, would show Velasquez also uh, 
path of social advancement, which of course Velasquez would take to a completely different level <laughs> in court. Um, so Francisco Pacheco, of course, recognized Velasquez's talent and also had his daughter Juana married Velasquez. Um, he would also organize how Velasquez is introduced through his civilian connections, how he's introduced to the court in Madrid because the prime minister with the new king um, is also from Seville and so there's connections together. Now we know the date of the painting because this is very much of what's happening at the first couple of decades in the 17th century. It's a bust portrait and a completely neutral background with no representation of his profession or social status, but the very decorative rough with all of this uh, elaborate fanciness uh, helps us date the painting because they were absolutely um, outlawed, shall we say, by February of 1623 and just as an example, we have the portrait next to us with this other flat starched color collar. Um, and this was part of the austerity measures of the new king, Philip IV, that came into power at a time. It, uh, and he was to eliminate corruption and also put in economic austerity measures, which also went with these aesthetic austerity measures. So it changes. So anyway, the, the rough in this helps us date the painting and that it's in Velasquez, around 20 years old of his father-in-law. We also know, we do believe it is Francisco Pacheco, thanks to comparisons and studies of other paintings that we believe is, is of him, and even one of his, the, a declared self-portrait in another painting that's in another museum, and so we can recognize it. And Velasquez's style is also developing, even if we can just compare between the two, he still has a stronger focal point of light from the left with more lights and darks in, in the face, but very finely um, painted, and we can see the personality of Francisco Pacheco, very strong, extraordinary personality comes across in Velasquez's talent of painting. So Francisco Pacheco, he would be the one who finds Velázquez and sets him on his way to how he would later be one of the greatest painters in Western European history, Western European art, and a very important figure. And when we walk by him, now we know a little bit more about him. So thank you for joining us today, and we will see you again in another session. Thank you.